Now, the Infectious Disease Center at the Tema General Hospital says it is ready to handle any case of the deadly coronavirus, COVID-19, one of at least two facilities designated by the Ministry of Health to handle suspected cases. The center has 12 beds and 42 medical professionals with special training on standby. Medical Director Dr. Richard Anthony conducted Joe News around the facility. Matilda Gavi of our health desk has more. The Infectious Disease Center, located on the premises of the Tema General Hospital, was initially built to handle Ebola cases following the outbreak in 2014. It will serve as a holding bay and treatment center. It has a nurse's unit, changing rooms, washrooms, personal protective equipment room, and a few offices. Though it currently has 12 beds, officials say it could be expanded. Medical director of the Tema General Hospital, Dr. Richard Anthony says frontline health workers have been given training on identifying cases and how to handle them. I will have a screening process, those with cough and other symptoms similar to, which may not necessarily be uh, coronavirus, are screened and separated. But should we have a strong suspected case, the patient will be moved straight from the outpatient to the facility which has been earmarked for isolation or quarantine uh, which we have so the staff for the management of this case is already been sensitized okay. and we have the list ready should there be a case he explains the 42 health professionals will be running three different shifts should a case be identified when there is a, a case of that nature, because it's a shift and one cannot stay in there for a very long time, at least you need no less than three shifts. And looking at one shift alone for a day, going through the three shifts, we need no less than 42 different category of staff, uh, which we have. So the staff for the management of this case is already been sensitized okay. and we have the list ready should there be a case. We have PPEs, that's a personal protective equipment. There is a dedicated team which is made up of a mix of health staff okay. ranging from nurses, doctors, uh, pharmacists, administrators, even orderlies which are part of this emergency response team, which has been put in place in readiness for this uh, coronavirus, or so we don't know what will come up even tomorrow. So it's an ongoing process. And in terms of logistics, we've been promised that should there be need to increase the number of PPs that we have, Central government and Ghana Health Service is ready to do that. For now, he says they remain on high alert should a case be confirmed. For Joy News, Matilda Gavi, Tema. Uh, but first, let's talk about the coronavirus and the decision by the Health Committee to back uh, the decision by the Ghana Health Service not to bring back the students who are now locked up in Hubei and indeed in Wuhan in China. For the record, the Parliamentary Select Committee on Health has never taken any decision to back the Ministry of Health not to bring uh, or not to evacuate Ghanaian students in Wuhan. We have never done that. We, on the minority side, um, issued a three-day of Tingutum, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, expires today. Exactly. And yesterday we had the opportunity. We invited the officials from the Ministry of uh, Health they appeared before us. In fact, the minister and his deputies didn't come. When they appeared... So are they, they are were, were these Ghana Health Service or Ministry yes, of Health? Yes, we have Dr. Um, um, Badu Sakodie. Okay, we have Dr. Director. Nsian Sari. Mm -hmm. We have the acting director general of uh, Ghana Health Service. They were all there. Okay. And they were supposed to brief us on the development and the reason why government is refusing to evacuate students from Wuhan to Ghana. So it was a briefing sort of. So we never got to a consensus or we never voted on any matter whether or not to back government decision not to evacuate students from Wuhan. In fact, at a point in time, the chairman drew the attention of Dr. Nsiansari that he must dwell much on the explanations why government is not evacuating students. Okay? And he said that government position was that for now, they were not going to evacuate students. The reasons given were that, one, um, they are in touch with the students. 
two, they think that they are assessing the situation as and when the risk level is high and there's the need for evacuation, they will do so. But for now, there's not going to be any evacuation. Okay. And I came in as a ranking member but, and I disagreed with them. And I cited these instances at the meeting. At the meeting, I said that, look, yes, nobody has contracted the disease so far, but I feel that you do not wait till somebody contracts the disease before you evacuate. You do not wait until the risk level is high before you evacuate. If you so think that there could be the probability of doing evacuation, then why don't you do it now when nobody has contracted the disease? Why do you wait till somebody contracts the disease before you do the evacuation? And when you say nobody has contracted, you mean the Ghanaian the the students? The Ghanaians, of course, yes. Okay, I mean the Ghanaians. but this is, this is all a bit strange because in an interview with our parliamentary correspondent, Joseph Opoku Gakbo, mm -hmm. and this is also the stories on myjoonline.com you can find. Um, the chairman of the committee, Dr. Kwabena Chumnyama, that's the same person. Was he in the meeting yesterday he was with in the you? Meeting. Shared the meeting. Okay, so here's a quote. At the committee level, we are a bit comfortable because we were told that in pandemic situations like this, you need to contain the situation. And this is a novel virus that has come up. So whole world is being treated as one town. So wherever you are identified, you need to be kept there and evaluated so that the disease will not spread to other places. Mama v, this is the committee. He's v, essentially telling us what the committee had agreed. No, in fact, this is what the officials from the Ministry of Health told us. And we also asked them questions. You see, it was an interaction. So they tell us things and we ask them questions. And then we tell them what they should do. There was, it was a long conversation. We never supported the idea of non-evacuation. In fact, Wait, was the committee divided? So were you speaking as NDC, NPP, or one no, committee? I was speaking as a ranking member. I made my point, and I, I specifically indicated that I disagree. And I'm, I, I mean, I pinpointed to them why I disagree. How with many them. members are on this committee? How many, how many well, members were present? Of, yesterday, um, if I can remember, were about not more than 15 at, the, at that okay. time. Okay, but certainly if you disagreed, there were other people who agreed with uh, the position taken by the health Nobody ministry. even indicated that he agreed. In fact, I indicated that I disagreed. So nobody at that committee, no member of parliament even indicated. I was, in fact, I started the questioning. I did most of the questioning. So not and even I, the chairman agreed with them? At the meeting, not even the chairman indicated that at that point that he agrees with them. If he agreed, that was in his mind. And in fact, to tell you the truth, we were not supposed to take a decision it's not as though we're going to write a report on what they were briefing us, whether or not government, as at that time, government had already issued, so they were not coming to consult us to probably, I mean, solicit our opinion. What, what was their mission? Was it to defend the decision not to we evacuate? We invited them to come and give us briefing on the development so far in general. So it was a long conversation. For example, they told us about the initial budget, and the initial budget of about 35 million Ghana cities. And government has announced only 2.5 million. And we indicated at the meeting to them, this shows how committed government is. Government is not committed to the combat of this disease. How do you mean? Because they cannot bring you 35 million Ghana cities, uh, what do you call it, budget, initial budget, and they give 2.5 million. Not even half of the money. Well, maybe they are releasing it in tranches. In, in, so they give you 35. Look, we don't have the luxury of time as far as this corona, novel coronavirus. So this is the health ministry, the Ghana Health Service. Did they complain that they couldn't work with the, with the amounts you of see, money? We have, we have this system in this country that government officials are quick to come into the media and whitewash government. We need to see what they are doing with the money, not to tell us. Well, this is at the committee level. There were no cameras there. Well, we have our own cameras. We have our own cameras. My, my point is, media. this was a technical committee. So... They, they, I'm not sure they had any reason to keep anything away from, from committee oh, members. Oh, they do it all the time. I mean, we find out we have our inform a way of I mean, getting our own information and all that. But the point I am making is that, um, my sister, we still stand by the point that if His Excellency the President had his daughter in Wuhan by now, he would have reconsidered his decision. It's simple. Other countries are evacuating. I don't know part of the not, world. Not all countries I'm saying have taken their, countries. their nationals. I'm saying 
Are you, are you saying you're not country. convinced? I was because, because, because we're told they that bring me a superior this, decision, this decision is based on expert advice. Look, it's, not, it's not the NPP there, there government deciding argument. not to do Listen, that. It is, it is, I mean, when ex technical people bring you advice, you interrogate the advice. I'm a ranking member. I also have access to technical advice. Don't forget, on our committee, we have not less than five medical doctors. So it's not as if we are ignorant about the whole matter. I lead them. And before I come and sit here and talk, I do my own consultations and I read. Okay, there are other countries, including Kenya, who have done evacuation. I don't know part of the world. Well, there's Pakistan. They haven't. I, there are equally me, I mean, other countries who have also not done evacuation. But our point is that we don't wait. We are talking about Europa, isn't it? We are thinking about getting Ghanaians votes everywhere they are. We're not thinking about their health. We're not thinking about their welfare. We think it's dangerous, so we should not go closer. We should leave them to their fate. We don't do that. I'll come to why you're still convinced even though we're told that there's expect advice from the World Health Organization and and others on this but I want us to listen to our parliamentary correspondent Joseph Opoku Gafo uh, and the outcome of this committee meeting reason we're having this conversation I think the committee met officers of the Ministry of Health led by the director of Ghana Health Service and the director of public health to brief us on our preparedness uh, against this coronavirus a pandemic and uh, what dominated the discussions obviously was the need whether to evacuate or not to evacuate our compatriots in China. Uh, what we got from the ministry is that um, they are always assessing the risks between evacuating them from China and also keeping them in China and the decision they have taken so far is that as of now uh, they are not going to evacuate them, but they are still assessing the situation. Even though they are not coming, they've already prepared a place to keep them. The, the moment there's an evacuation, the moment they get the signal that assessing the risks, it is better to evacuate them from China. They will do so. They assured us that when that signal comes, they can do the evacuation in 48 hours, but they are really well prepared. And in addition to that, they are in constant touch with the uh, uh, citizens, the, most of them are students. They have uh, a, uh, a two-day video conference call with them. So that's the chairman of the Health Committee of Parliament, Dr. Kwabina Chumunyama. That's your chairman. Yes, Mama V, it's clear in your submission. Number one, let me put it on record that the whole committee didn't agree to support the decision of government. If he supports the decision of government, that is... And you were also not convinced about the reasons. But Isn't that, you or the entire committee? Well, there are members who also ag agree with me. But let's even take his own submission. Listen to what he said. That the minister said they were assessing the risk level. Mm -hmm. As of when necessary, they will do evacuation. Mm -hmm. Did you hear that? It means that there is a possibility of evacuation, isn't it? Possibility, probability. So as of when the risk level is high... We may do that in 24 hours. Did you hear that? So why do we do that? It's an irresponsible decision. How do you arrive so at that please, conclusion let me, let me, let me, when you are not privy to the kind of information that they are privy to? No, you this, had, this is you, common you, sense matter. But you, no, you, you, had, this you had access to the health ministry. I mean, they are closer to the situation than you and I. So they gave us the information they have. And this is the uh, ministry telling us what they have. They are saying that there's a possibility of evacuation, but they are assessing the rest of This is common sense. They are assessing the risk level. As and when the risk level is high, they will do evacuation in less than 24 hours. What's wrong with that? What is wrong with, it, with that is that why do you wait till the risk level is high before you do evacuation? As of now, at least nobody has contracted the disease. They are safe. You don't go and put a fly there and say everybody should jump into it. Even before you do that. And they have been coming under this cheap banner that if we bring them in, there's the probability of importing the virus into this country. Technical people should not be speaking that way. Is that, that uh, did they add that reason to it? Well, I've heard that they, at the committee level, they didn't say that, but I've heard that in the media a lot. But that's a cheap one. Listen, we have not said that they should just go and put a, a fly there and then say anybody who is a Ghanaian should jump into it and go to Ghana. That's not what we have said. Before even they do the evacuation, there are protocols. Before they embark on the trip, they will be screening, there will be a means of identification, diagnosis. Do you, do you think that we have the right funding to do this evacuation? Well, that's one I've already indicated. I think that the whole issue and the reason why we are not having that political will is that we don't want to spend as far as this issue is concerned. Because, you see, Mamabi, we've been here before during the Ebola time. 
You saw it. There was inter-ministerial committee. The president led the charge. We had some... Ghana was even made the distribution hub for uh, distribution of uh, logistics to combat Ebola. Isn't that our... Or wasn't that the advantage that we had volunteering to do that? Yes. Meant so, that... We, we we had access to some of these logistics. Exactly, and but this is not the same situation, listen, is listen, it? Listen, listen, Mama v, Mama v, I've had opportunity to listen to the experts. I've had opportunity to listen to a lot of people. Look, the structures are there. We only need to reactivate the structures. Look, let me tell you one story. When the Argentine and the Chinese, the suspected cases, got to Kolebu, you saw it in the video. The professionals there, the health professionals there, were running health tasks together. What does it tell you? We are ill prepared. But, but that's a special case because we know, that, we know that Kolibu is not a designated place. So why center. do they go there anyway? If it's not a designated place, it means that people can walk anywhere. And you say we are prepared. So the point is, even within the country, you say we are not prepared. Yes, mm -hmm. you think we have the capacity so, to go and bring what I'm, the point a, a number of students who are listen, in the epic center of this virus. Me. Listen to me. The point I'm arriving at is that government is being insensitive. Government is simply not reactivating the structures we have. Why, why would because government choose to do that? Because we have other centers. Well, they, they fear spending. Not to lie. Why would you give somebody 2.5 million Ghana when he says he needs initial? He didn't even say the total budget. Initial 35 million Ghana Let, Let's let's go to the ultimatum that the minority gave. Yeah. So uh, they, it ends today. So it what? It ends today. Yesterday we met them. We still disagree with them. We'll meet leadership right after here. I was supposed to meet leadership at this time, but you people dragged me here. And so from here, we'll meet leadership. And we'll is, is there a the plan? Because the minority also has capacity. When I say the minority, the opposition. Capacity to You've work. been in government before. You have networks. You could also, in some ways, help those students instead of always talking about the situation. Oh, it still remains the same. We have one government as a nation. We pay our taxes to government. Government must learn to be responsible. Government, there's only one government. We have Ghana government. And his essence is not Dan Kwakupata, he's the president of the Republic of Ghana. He must learn to be responsible. You don't run after people's votes, chanting Rupa. When they are in difficulty, you say opposition should go and help. But you know, but, but, but the point is that but the point is that they are running the government. Yes. And they have to make one decision or the yes. other. And, and the decision what, they have made, we are the... criticizing their decision. They should come with a superior argument. They should come and convince us why they think that we should not evacuate. If they come with a superior argument and we are convinced, why not? For the development of Mother Ghana. But when you give an ultimatum, uh -huh. then we are expecting a lot from you as a minority, like, as an opposition. We have other tools and arsenals available to us as members such of as, such as inviting the minister to appear on the floor of the house. What difference would that make? I'm saying that as you know the work we do. We are not the executive. Okay? Arms of government. We are not the executive. We don't control public pairs. We have restrictions. We have to serve as a check on the executive. And that's what we are doing. The executive takes decisions. They do the expenditure. But we must serve as a check. Okay. We must so, synthesize. We so, must so one of it would be, one of it would be to, to get the, so I don't have the to money get the to minister. go and build an isolation center. I don't have the money. So one of the options you say is to get the minister back in parliament. Because he was in parliament not too long ago. No, that was, listen. Mm -hmm. And I told him on one of your uh, radio stations today. But you shouldn't have been waited till we invited him to the floor of the house. He should have, on his own evolution, appeared to brief us. Immediately we resumed. But in any case, he was invited to the floor of the house. He gave some briefing. The deputy minister for foreign affairs also appeared. He also gave some briefing. We were not satisfied. We addressed the press. Upon that, we invited them to appear. And look at... That's they, yesterday's that's meeting. That's yesterday's meeting. Okay. They came, I mean, at the expense of our invitation. And you're still not convinced. And, and we are still not convinced. Unless, of course, unless, and let me admit here, yesterday's briefing was, uh, if you like, um, um, was better than what the minister gave on the floor of the house. So at least there were certain things we agreed on. For example, we advised them that they should go and communicate to the people of this country very well, well coordinated manner. We, have, we should be having jingles on TV stations and radio stations playing to tell the people about this virus. What was their response to that suggestion? Well, they said they are going to do it. And you see, when? What, that is the question. If today, if in a matter of less than one month, more than 43,000 people have been infected with a particular virus, if in a matter of one month, a, a particular virus is killing thousands of people, more than 1,000, 1,000, 1,300 people are dying, okay? And you are saying you are now going to do it. Have you heard it? 
tell me, multimedia, have you played anything of that nature here? It tells you their preparation. So I am not talking because I want to talk. I am not talking because, well, uh, because of anything. It's from other Ghana. You will be the same people who will come and ask us. So what, what's your like, next what move? Like, what did you do when this is, what did you say when this is? So what's your out? next move? My next move is what I, a lot of what you want me to repeat. No, because, it. because, I'm the, I'm, and, I'm, and, and this question is in connection with the ultimatum Look, that the know, minority you know, gave. You know, you know, through your you foreign know affairs position, spokesperson. You know, you know our position on the distribution of the ambulances. And we'll continue to stand by this decision we have taken, we'll persist. If it takes us to, if it should take us to invite the minister again, we'll do that. We will, as members on the committee, we will revert to... So you're meeting today to today, review... To, yes, today we are reverting back to leadership. Anything I say, I speak on behalf of the minority on issues okay. of health. 